contest under pressure. Yeah. And what's his face coming back up? Yeah. What's yeah. his face? What's his face? What's his face? Hide your face. Hide your face. Hide your women. It makes you think of skeets. Learn to each other. Right? That is so sorry. Together. Oh, we got to dance song. Oh, we got to dance song. This motherfucker wants me to read a poem off of his phone. And he's got it on thumbprint lock. Like someone gives a shit about what texts he sends. Oh. Alright, so here's the deal. We both just read these poems. He's reading mine. I'm reading his. We just read them literally 30 seconds ago. Yeah. Would you like to go first? Sure. Okay. It's a poem called DeLorean. DeLorean. Turn the key and go home as you hear the voice of a beautiful woman whom you used to turn over in the morning and hopefully turn on. Shout at a crowd, time to go home! Turn the engine over and drive the 20 home, still magnificent and still incompatible because I am flawed and scarred, but it still makes me smile when I hear her yell. Even if I am an albatross, a thorn, or just a simple nuisance, like a dirty stove in her kitchen, she's a badass chick, no longer mine, but I love to watch her fly and hear her bellow as if the world owes her more, and it does. Elsie. Get a title for this. Mr. Rogers! Alright, this is from Lost in Dawn. So about two and a half years ago, I was at this bar where I'm telling this guy about my romantic failures. Keep spilling my guts as I would often do at that time of my life. The wounds were still fresh and I had this nasty habit of prying into them and infecting the misfortune of my family and friends compassion. But this guy's response was different, yet not at all helpful. He gave me a look like there was a guffaw hiding in the face, impatient and eerily irritated in the gleam of his eyes, as if he was tempted to tell me I should have known better. Instead, he just said, you could have asked me to be your boyfriend. You're so right, because I've been wanting to ask you that, but oh darn the luck you've taken, you're taken. I should have known that since I'm gay and you're gay, that there was a rule saying that I'm property to be bought and sold. Yep. Simply because we both have a tendency to suck dick. That shouldn't have meant we were Perfect for each other. I mean, who cares about stuff like mutual affection, chemistry, and oh yeah, my choice in the matter. So what if you're perpetuating an awful stereotype that gay men are nothing more than sex toys, devoid of much emotion or conversation or worth? Why? We're just walking, talking pieces of plastic <clears throat> with a few orifices for only everyone's pleasure. And since we're pretty much whores anyway, and perking up like flamboyant cartoon characters, <coughs> <coughs> two packs a day. <laughs> Since we're all pretty much whores anyway and perking up like flamboyant cartoon characters, when we see something else attached to a penis and say, Oh, a man. <laughs> in fact, whenever I get another chance, I move straight in. I'll move straight in because, you know, apparently my options are pretty slim for something more serious. And even if I don't believe that, I'm sure you use your charm and wit to make me believe otherwise. So yeah, 
I may not be in all that shape yet, but somehow I think I can do better and deserve better than some guy at the bar who thinks that every man in the place is his. So I'll just take a step back and work on myself and understand this mysterious person a little bit better. After all, I'm not saying I don't have faults. I just think that with time proven and its patience, I can speak and act a little more genuine. I should only hope that time will be just as kind to you. Because we really don't need another fake. True that. Woo! Yeah. Good. Are you rooting through my phone? <laughs> Next person.